All right, we're testing. This is just me getting set up, hopefully. This is one that's already modified. You can already see. This cover is actually pretty good, except for this. I don't know if you can see that. All right, chip missing out of it here. Doesn't really affect it structurally, but um, the uh, the other covers vary in uh, the condition. This one. This is, there's a chunk missing out of it here. The bottom of this screw boss needs to be repaired. So that's doable, but it takes time. This is one that I just acquired. It's in nice shape. Oh, see it up here. I don't know if you can see. Um, you know, the bosses are good. Screw bosses are all, oops, they're all good. Hopefully this is coming out. And the cover itself is in good shape. Um, so they vary somewhat, but for the most part, they get these chips. If they get any damage that's like minor, but not the cover is no longer pristine. It's these, these chips that get broken out, usually from the chain. They run the chains too loose. and the, chain goes up and whacks the cover. Um, this is a brand new new old stock. I'm guessing it's probably a, a, an F9C with polished cases. This is a new old stock cover. I am going to modify it for the clutch, but this is going to be a little bit more than what I quoted in my original video um, due to the fact that parts are getting harder to acquire and they're also people are wanting more money for them the price is going to go up a little bit I'm not a hundred percent sure but I'm trying to trying to see if a, you know hundred fifty dollars is feasible um, if you know the, uh, if the covers on the exchange um, but if you want to buy a cover outright it's going to probably push the price to 200 I'm going to see if I can get it under 200 but We'll see. Uh, I know, it, you know, 100 and a quarter is what I quoted originally, but the prices are going up because it's harder for me to find these case, these uh, sprocket covers in good shape. So, without trying to be too ambiguous, um, I'm going to try to stay around, you know, the lower side of the numbers that are available. I'm not trying to get rich off of this. I do want to get something for my troubles um, to kind of finance my vintage motocross racing when I can do it. Um, I know I had mentioned that I've had open heart surgery. I don't know if I should pull my shirt up and show you my scar here where they opened me up, but this is also I've had surgery here recently. I used to have a a, a bulge like this. It was similar but much larger. What it's from is from needles, uh, 14 gauge needles from dialysis treatments. That's uh, almost eight years worth of needles being placed in the same area many times. And what happens is, if you can picture these as needle, uh, where the needles have been put in, and so the needle gets put in here and it opens the skin up a little bit and then it heals and then the needle gets put in over here and it opens up a little bit you know over here and eventually if you could put them all in a line this would open up like you cut it pulled it apart and then it filled in with scar tissue that's what these are and of course it does the same thing underneath to the uh, the vessels that are under here there's a there's a, an artery this, this scar, they rerouted a big vein to this artery. And this artery goes up my arm. And you can see, I don't know if you can see that, this and this. And that is a, 
that's the where the dialysis has expanded this from pumping so much through it to do the treatments. Anyway, um, so I'm still in progress on, on this and I'm having some aftermath from my heart surgery. I had it done in January, but I never had any idea I'd still be having chest pain on this side. It's not my heart itself. It's um, it, If you can picture having a big shot of Novocaine in your chest from like here over, I don't know why it's not on the other side, but anyway, but that's some of that. I don't want to get, I don't want to bore you to death with my personal challenges like that, but at any rate, so back to the covers. I do buy all these covers used where I can find them. Um, one of the problems is, is if you find one for a decent price, and I'm sure that you folks that have bought things on the internet, you find out, oh, the price is really good, to so find out what they want to ship it. So I have to be conscious of the price to buy it, even just to get it for exchange, and that's the thing that's kind of making me a little bit nervous, not nervous, but I'm concerned that if someone wanted an exchange cover in the essence of time, that, uh, you know, you send me your cover and you think it's, you know, in a scale of 1 to 10, it's a, you know, it's a 7. And I send you a cover that you judge, you know, as a 5. Meanwhile, I look at it and think they're the same. That's the kind of thing I want to try to avoid. But if we do exchange covers so that you can have one right away, um, then that's something that we'll have to deal with on a one-on-one -on -one basis. I mean, I'm sure most of you folks realize this is used parts and, you know, you may have to refinish them. This one, this cover, other than this little spot here, this is actually a pretty nice cover overall. I mean, it's, it's pretty nice. Um, there's some of these, there's some black ones over here that, like this one, this this one's pretty good, you know, I mean, it does need to be refinished if you're concerned about that. Um, if you're going to paint it, obviously that's not an issue to, to either strip it or use some good paint, paint over it, scuff it up and paint it. This, this one's been on a bike, this is in really nice shape, has no, this is about the only thing where the chain has touched anything this year. Um, and the rest of it is, you know, no no broken areas here or anything like that, right? The outside finish isn't too bad. So, those are more run-of-the-mill. But like I said, this one, what you know, what do I do? Do I not modify it in case someone wants it for a restored bike? Or do I go ahead and modify it and then the restored bike guy has new, um, or it doesn't have to be a restored bike guy. He's, um, the, the person with the restored bike, if they need this cover, the clutch throw-up mechanism isn't going to matter, but the chances of them riding it, let's face it, if it's a 100-point or a 99-point restoration, you're probably not going to ride it. But I think the clutch modification adds great value to these motorcycles. And by that, I mean if you do use it, it makes the bike that much better. And these are great motorcycles. The uh, And I'll list them out. I know it's uh, redundant, but the, all the um, F5, F5A, the F8, the F8A, F81M, and all the F9s. F11, I'm 90% sure. I haven't done one yet because I've been looking for a good cover. 90% sure I can do the same modification to one of those covers. Looking at pictures of them, it looks like the same screw pattern and the same distances as these covers for the the F5, F8, F9. So if the F11 is feasible, then I'm you know I'm going to go ahead and get one and see if someone wants to get one. I'm going to get one so someone else can have one. That, that's probably better. <laughs> There's a fellow out there that's probably watching this video. His name is Ryan. He knows who he is. He sent me an F7 
sprocket cover. I haven't forgotten about them, but due to these various things, I just haven't been out in the shop as much as I'd like to be. And I will tell you that I had to do more modifying to the cover than I anticipated. What I'm going to end up doing, I don't have the cover in front of me. It's here. I can, I know where it is. I just, I'm not near it. <clears throat> this, on your cover, it poses a little bit of a problem because I had to add material because your cover, as you know, has that little piece that comes off the ignition cover and goes over the front to cover it. These covers use a plug, a rubber plug. And I had completely forgotten about that. What I'm going to end up doing, I think, is make a new a block of aluminum similar to this, but more uh, a little bit more of a footprint, if you will. And I may have to open your cover up to accommodate it. Because what had happened when I went to add material to it, the cover is so thin that in order for me to put the right amount of material on there, it, the material, the, the, the heat needed to put the material in place to put so that I can screw that throw out in, it's distorting the cover. And I don't want to do that because then it becomes useless. There is another consideration. I may, I may get another cover for your bike, uh, an F6 or an F7. I have an F7 of my own, by the way. So it helps me get the fitting done now that I have that that engine. So I may wind up making a new sprocket cover. It may end up being fabricated. Uh, I'm going to look into that a little more. But I am going to get you fixed up, Ryan. I know we we did this on a handshake, and I hope that you know it hasn't been too painful. And your bikes are up and running. I know. I thought I at least heard that that was a spare cover. Okay couple of things. This rod, this is the one that goes into the case, the engine case, in front of the front sprocket. This area right here, yeah, this pen's better than my fat finger. This area right here needs to be reduced about 20 thousandths. There's a couple of ways you can do that. If you have a drill press or a drill, you can put this in the chuck of the drill or the drill press and then take a regular grinder, uh, like a four inch grinder or a Dremel even. And if you can picture this in a drill press and it's, you know, it's going to spin around, right? And this is your Dremel or your, well, your Dremel, we'll just say a Dremel with a stone on it. And you can dress this down here to reduce the the diameter and what that's for is is that the, the um, where this has to go where the the ball and the adjuster inside of the throat itself which is right here and this rod it goes in here it almost fits the trouble is I'm a little leery of taking any material out of this because as you can see there's a I don't know maybe you can't there's a ball bearing in there and I'm afraid that if I remove material enough to get that rod to fit that the the, uh, the ball may try to come out Let me see if I can eliminate that so hopefully you can see the ball in there so that's something that you'll have to do I I don't have a way to get these rods to provide one with you. Beside reducing the diameter, you'll have to shorten about a quarter of an inch. Uh, it all has to do with the back spacings inside the covers and the or the cover in the engine case. Something related. Give me one second. This is a clutch cable, and it's pretty typical of what the failures are on those uh, the bikes that these covers fit. And let me show you if you can see this. As you may be able to see, 
this is all frayed see the wires sticking out this is all frayed and then here this looks like it's frayed but it's not what it is there's a plastic liner on the inner cable and that see how that is and what that does is that gets rubbed going through this ferrule and sometimes inside this adjuster and in here and what happens is it starts binding it up and a lot of times what will happen is this this will fracture and break up inside the lever on the handlebar and 99 times well not quite that often 90 times out of 100 this the rest of it is good because you'll need this fitting you need the center adjuster the spring isn't hundred percent necessary but it's a good idea to have it there even though the clutch cable does get relocated slightly um, it, it moves this in such a way that the spring isn't really needed but it's it's probably a good idea to leave it there anyway as designed and these upper cables they usually stay well what I've been doing is rebuilding these cables putting new inner wires in brand new inner wires with new fittings on each end and it's a it's a bolt-in thing but I need I'm trying to keep a supply of used good used cables that can be rebuilt because this is an ongoing problem you might find new cables I mean if you can find them for the right price by all means that's the way to go but um, the ones that you find a lot of times are crazy priced people want crazy prices for rear brake cables I'm working on that to do the same thing they all tend to have the same issues and that kind of takes the finding used ones good used ones it lowers the chances of you doing that again not to be redundant or sound like a fool but they all have the same issues uh, for some reason I mean it's just one of those things uh, over the years they their shortcomings seem to be similar you know so anyway that's where it's kind of this kind of stops for now I'm gonna have another video in a few days showing po some possible ways to modify this I'm got like I said I'm gonna try to see if I can figure out a way to make new ones of these to send with the covers and then then it's truly just put it plug it in hook it you know hook things up plug it in and go but for right now I'm working around these things to hopefully get some of you going those of you that are interested uh, want to do something uh, with these covers you can contact me via email um, at f51m or excuse me f51m at aol.com I'll put the email link in the description uh, what I'll do is, is uh, instead of putting the at which is the a with the, the circle around it I'll spell the word at and put it in brackets so that you know you just need to use the at so the bots don't pick it up and start flooding me with rubbish mail so um, anyway that's it for now if you made it this far I appreciate you taking the time to watch and uh, hopefully this is going to help some of you folks that have these bikes they're great motorcycles it's uh this is one of the shortcomings of them uh, was that plastic on plastic throw out that's an ill-fated design I don't know why they left it in there for so many years um, but they did and uh, this is a real nice setup I think if you're probably watching this you saw the other video where I put the scale on the clutch lever to show you how much the force is if you did that to your bike even with all brand new stock parts that clutch pull is going to be I guarantee you at least twice what this setup is if and it probably be more than that I never tested it but just from working on them when they were brand new and racing one when they were um, you know I had one like the, the bike that's in my video the other video that bike is identical to the one I raced when I was a kid I, I won a lot of races with it in motocross in New England so they're good motorcycles but 
again, they are what they are, and they, their shortcomings can be dealt with. You just have to give them a chance. Too many people, I don't know what it is. One or two things need to be dealt with, and they, you know, they, um, they, they try to make it into something it's not. And then when those shortcomings, you know, like the weight, they're all heavy. All those bikes are heavy, but they're, they're, they work well. I mean, they really do. So uh, for those of you that like them, hopefully this is an oasis for some of the nitpicking problems that, that uh, make your bike not fun to ride. And I'm always uh, looking for new ways to do stuff to, to try to keep the cost down and keep the part availability up. So um, uh, unfortunately, Circle F, uh, the owner, Kevin Felly, um, he succumbed to pancreatic cancer. I think it was last year. I was in, I was, I've known him for a long time, or knew him for a long time, and I was in the midst of a deal to, to get him to build me like 10 or 20 uh, pipes. And what I have, uh, I found that uh, the Vasani pipe on my bikes work pretty well. Um, I use the bike in Arma early sportsman stock. So they want stuff that's period correct. And the rules are relatively strict. So that bike fits it to the letter. I don't want to try to sneak in modern pipe technology. And that's, it's just not necessary. The bike has a lot of power as is. Um, the pipe, the bike runs good with the pipe. Um, so it's, I don't think it's necessary. There, you know, if you ever rode one in a 350, is eye-opening, but an F8, even a stock F8, the, the bike with the lights on it, they're not, they're not weak. Those things have good power. They really, they really do. You know, the only shortcoming of that bike, it's like as is, other than you know, like the the, the clutch throw out things. Just, but the, any major differences between the F8 and the F9 that I think Kawasaki was silly doing this. They should have put a 21-inch front wheel on it. That's really the only thing that's on there, original, that they missed the boat on, a 19-inch front wheel. What were they thinking? But anyway, that's it for now. Again, thank you all for watching. Uh, you subscribers, uh, thanks for hanging in there. Um, and I'm going to try to get more content out here on a little bit more uh, regular basis. I apologize for not doing it recently it's just it is what it is so all right folks hopefully everything's going well where you are um hope this year ends up being a healthy and happy one despite the inflation and the various uh things that are day-to-day -day challenges but hang in there folks it may not get better tomorrow but it's gonna it's gonna get better one of these days so it's all we can do. Deal with it. Try to keep our sanity, keep our bikes going. All right, that's it. Take care. Talk to you soon.